Uh, good evening and welcome to the City Council meeting of East Hampton, Massachusetts, Wednesday, July 6th, uh, 2016. Uh, can I have a roll call, please? Dan Carey. Present. Peg Kano. Here. Salem Derby. Present. Jennifer Hayes. Here. J.P. Kuczynski. Joe McCoy. Dan Rist. Here. Tamara Smith. Here. Joy Winnie. And can we stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And I would entertain a motion to approve the so minutes. So moved. Okay, second. any further discussion? You have a second. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Abstention? Okay. One abstention. Uh, this is by five votes. Were you out? I was oh, the okay. abstention. Uh, yes. Okay. Um, and now uh, we would like to invite anyone from the public that would like to come up and speak before the council on issues not related to items on our public hearing tonight. Seeing none, I think we can move on to communications from elected officials, boards, and committees. I don't have any uh, correspondence, so that'll take us right to mayor communications. When we get to that, under the ball fields, or um, well, that's under mayor. Yeah, it, it is under there. So maybe we can do the ball field now, okay. while you're up there. What, what, uh, whatever it is, more convenient. That's all. <laughs> Good evening. And so this is um, just a request to remove naming the ball fields, just to remove it from the agenda at this point in time. They do want to still go through with naming the ball fields, but what they like to do is they like to do it as part of their jamboree celebration in April. So they wanted to do the naming of it closer to that. And, um, and felt that by leaving it on the city council agenda, you would have to keep getting extensions on it. And it just might be better to just pull it off and then put it back in there, maybe February, uh, enough time to get a committee and, uh, and uh, the five members and then name it. Mr. President. Yes, I Council move on. that we remove the naming of the ball field in section three of Anna Tuck Park from the council agenda without prejudice. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second on that table. Any further discussion? Okay, that being said, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone against? Any abstentions? Seeing none, motion passes. Uh, and that brings us to our reports of standing committees, and I believe that would bring us to finance. Mr. President, I have no report other than the public hearings, and there will be no meetings for the finance committee until September. Okay, public safety. Um, we, thank you. Uh, we need to get together and figure out when our next meeting is going to be. We're continuing the review of the street acceptance protocol, and we also have a piece of new business. Would you like me to move that over from the subcommittee that would now? That would be great. Thank you. So a motion to move the request of no parking sign in the corner of Prospect Street and Pleasant Street to public safety. Second. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any abstentions or Hey, see none passes. Anything further, Councillor? No, thank you. That concludes. Okay, thank you. Appointments. Councillor Smith. We were unable to meet a quorum this evening for the City Council Appointments Subcommittee. And I have three uh, appointments, mayoral appointments, that need to be considered. I'm going to defer to, to Dan Riss because we had just spoken about possible alternate alternatives to this under the charter if we do not approve these appointments this evening and i think we can meet as a council as as a whole as a committee since the committee attempted to meet we're fulfilling our obligation if we don't approve them they become and i think we ought to speak our mind to them if we wish to so i think it's appropriate for us to go ahead and talk about each of the, these uh, appointments they're pretty obvious so I think okay. we should just approve them or talk about it anyway. Sounds fair. Okay. So f the first appointment that I would like to make a motion to consider for reappointment is Barbara Lombard for the clerk for city council with a term expiration of August 31st, 2018. Second. Okay. So we have a, a motion and a second on the table. Any further discussion? She has been absolutely a jewel for the city council. We are lucky to have Barbara. I honestly don't think we could function without her. So, yes, uh, so that being said, uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. 
Any abstentions or against? No. Motion passes. Okay, second appointment is for Valerie Bernier, who is our city auditor. And this is for a term expiration of September 1st, 2019. So I'd like to make a motion to move her name forward to the full committee for the appointment for a city auditor. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second on the table. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any abstentions or against? Seeing none, motion passes. Okay, and the third appointment is for Hedel Patel who is the assistant city auditor, and that's for a term expiration of September 1st, 2019. And um, this application came with a letter of support from uh, Valerie Bernier for, let's see. Ms. Hedel Patel started on May 10th, 2016 as the new assistant and is doing an excellent job. I have appointed her with the mayor's approval per MGL chapter 41 and 49 and respectfully request that you appoint her along with my reappointment per city charter section 28. So I'd like to make a motion to move Hedel Patel to the position of assistant city auditor and move that for towards the Sorry, move that for the entire city council. Second. second. Okay, we have a motion and second on the table. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Any abstentions or no's? Seeing none, motion passes. Okay, and my last point of business is I would like to move that Rachel Phillips, who has applied for the position <coughs> of being in the AC, ECA Plus, Committee with a term expiration of 1231-18 be moved to the appointment subcommittee for consideration. Second. Okay. Um, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. <coughs> Any against or abstentions? Okay. Motion passes. Okay. And because there are the other two members of the appointment subcommittee <coughs> is not here, I can't set a following date since I will not be here during the next city council meeting. So to be announced. Okay. Thank you, Councilor. Uh, an ordinance, uh, we have uh, not met in a couple weeks, so uh, the ordinance uh, next meeting will be a week from tonight at 6 p.m. here at 50 Payson, in a place where Barbara will tell us. Uh, so the 13th, July 13th, 6 p.m. And at that time, we are going to focus less on plastic bag, um, which we are going to meet um, at a different date to discuss that, but we're going to be looking at um, the sign ordinance and the food truck ordinance. So those are the two items that are going to be on our agenda. I believe it is the 20th, um, it is July 20th, we will have an informational um, and educational meeting around single-use plastic bags. Um, and that is, that is going to be here at 6 p.m. And that concludes my report property. Our oh. chair is not here. Would you oh, like <clears throat> yeah, so um, we met uh, a couple of weeks ago. We have a request for an easement on a purchase of a building at 2 Coldolf Street. And um, just want to give you some background. Um, during the course of the sale, and in order to, I believe, clear title, they found and discovered that there were two pieces of property contained in the sale that are not accounted for. There is a sewer area for access to a sewer that would be, unless this easement is granted to the city by the buyer, there would be an area which would not necessarily have easy access for us to get into the sewer area. That is one easement that the city wants from the buyer. Then there's another easement that the buyer wants from the city, which um, abutting up to the building is a parking lot. Part of that parking lot containing some number of parking spaces belongs to the city. And that abuts up to the, the rail trail. They don't really intersect. They, it, they've been there for 20 years the way they are, and there's been no problem with it whatsoever. Um, so the parking area is the easement requested by the buyer of the city. The sewer easement is being requested of the city. So, but from the buyer. So um, 
the the meeting was held in subcommittee and we went over the pros and cons uh, ad nauseum on what the uh, two pieces of property would be the the paperwork and the costs for both easements will be borne by the purchaser the city will not have to uh, spend any money on the easement so we we had the motion to bring this forward to the uh, full council with a two to one vote for approval so two councilors agreed that this was a good mix of the easements it was a good agreement that they had put in place one counselor disagreed uh, that counselor JP Kuczynski also has submitted a statement that he wants read into the record tonight um, regarding this and then pending any questions from anyone I will make a motion okay we, I, I think maybe before we read the in? minority report we can hear from so uh, I, I would like uh, mr. president I would like Counselor. as a point of order that we read the minority report first so that the mayor and anyone else who would like to speak Respond to, the, to the minority report would be able to, so we all heard it first Fair okay enough. if you, Fair you wouldn't enough. mind so if Councillor Smith I think has the report mm -hmm. the minority report. okay the statement reads since I am vacation on vacation I have asked for the statement to be read to the councillors before us is an opportunity to be fiscally responsible on behalf of East Hampton as much as I would like to see the city gain an easement for the sewer line at 2 Calduff Street as a real estate professional, I am unwilling to vote for two easements that are not of equal value. The 18 to 20 parking spaces are worth much more than the sewer easement. Therefore, I strongly recommend that before taking any action on this proposal, the council formally request the administration to hire a professional real estate appraiser to assure that the city does not sell itself short. It is my professional opinion that we should be asking for compensation in the amount of $2,000 per year. In these tough financial times, I'm sorry, in these tough fiscal times, $2,000 is just too much money to be giving up each year. Sincerely, J.P. Kwasinski. And that's the end of the statement. Okay. Okay. No, now we can hear from the mayor. Well, first of all, I would um, <coughs> also thank the property subcommittee for putting together two meetings very close to each other to try to address these easements, um, knowing that you know with a with a purchase or a sale how timely things are. So I'd like to t thank you for you know pulling pulling that together, um, and going over detail. And I know you viewed the site and uh, it was a, a lot of um, a lot of information to cover in the two meetings. Uh, before that before that point in time. Um, this originally came to our this request originally came to our city attorney it started out when the um, when the buyer's attorney was doing the title search and um, then at their cost a survey of the property was done um, so it came to our city attorney's attention who brought it to our DPW director's attention and also to mine and so he worked diligently like I can tell you um, Joe will be able to give you in-depth detail as to what we feel the value and the importance to the easement on our end is. And I know Joe can give you much more in-depth detail on that. Uh, but I can tell you that the buyer's attorney, the seller's attorney, and our city attorney worked on this for quite a while before you know it got to the stages where we knew it was going to be an easement, which we feel you know uh, two easements, one that the city needs and one that the property owners needs was a win-win for for all of us I can also uh, give you a little bit of history on easements I know we've just done some easements and they do consider parking uh, with our mills projects and there was no charges uh, incurred for those the there is uh, one that I, I believe JP um, Councilor Kwasinski was thinking about in the past and that was when the at that time it was called the tri-county school was building a new school and needed the property which is very different than an easement that had been using you know that property that had been used for a long time by the owners so any questions please don't hesitate and I think that our DPW director can answer a lot of it Councilor, I have a question for you okay. and the DPW first of all if I understand this correctly Councilor Connor we're swapping easements so there's already a benefit to the city in a sense of a barter we're getting something we're not we're not giving away an easement for nothing we're getting something in return 
So I don't know if I agree with Councilor Kosinski's contention that we're giving away something. But, but am I correct? We are getting that, an easement. That is exactly that our we stance. Need this easement. That is exactly our stance. And again, I think Joe can tell you the importance. But what happened when we were originally contacted? Uh, Joe went out to view the property uh, for the easement purposes, and that's when he found that we have a sewer. Um, pipes that are directly on their property and we need a sewer easement there. So that's when it became, well, that's great, you know, this is a property that, you know, we would be able to grant them an easement, but now we need one. And, um, and the value that we place on them. It also went before the Board of Public Works and the Board of Public Works voted that they would like both easements to uh, occur and that they felt that you know, a swap, the city doing one easement and the buyers basically doing, buyer sellers doing another was, you know, a perfect, Equitable. a perfect setup. But I think if you listen I'd, on I'd our like end, hear Joe, yeah. I think Joe is going to tell you, and you know, it's, you almost hate playing your hand, but he's going to tell you the value on our end. Okay. Thank you, Joe. So, Joe, this is quite necessary. This is quite necessary. We talk about a sewer line that we actually call this a sewer interceptor. This is a trunk line. This runs all the way from the bike path, all the way from Wimelco Way, all the way down to around those apartments where it comes off of the bike path and goes very close to the buildings, between five and eight feet away from their building. Uh, so if we have to get in there, we're basically working right next to their, their building. So we need to, an easement is, is, is necessary. Uh, I, I make the point, I made the point at subcommittee, if they were to build uh, porches or um, overhangs or something and we had to get in there, we'd have to take this down. Then we'd have to re rebuild it for them. If we have an easement, that says we can get in there and work on it whenever we want. Um, this takes all the waste, uh, all the sewage from, say, um, Glendale Street to the Southampton line and runs it down there and at that point, it, like I said, it comes off the bike path and runs down Coldoff Street and then comes to Williston Ave and then it goes this way. This is a very important piece of pipe. For us to have a pipe that's that size, that's so close to private property, if we have a chance to get an easement, this is, this is a win-win. Thank you, that's what I wanted to hear. I want to make another comment relative to what JP said about $2,000 a year. Um, and maybe that in his mind is the value, but I'm not sure where we would get this $2,000 from, who would be paying it, because I'm fairly certain that the buyers would not pay it because they've made it very clear that should we not give them this easement, they don't need that parking area. They have other areas that they can park it. So, would it be the case that we decided that yes it makes more sense to keep the parking area and charge and get two thousand dollars a year back from the buyer they would just say no thank you and walk away they've made that pretty clear so with that scenario we would have a very difficult time legally getting access to the sewer line is what i'm hearing without an easement for that right yep and obviously they've said that they won't give you two thousand you have that on record we, they said that they won't need the parking lot Right, so, and this easement does not need, these easements trade-offs don't need to happen in order for the sale to come through. If I'm hearing that correctly, they can walk away from this easement swap and still have a sale. Am I correct on that? I believe I that. think so, yeah. yeah. So, because what you're is saying is if we say no, they're going to say, well, okay. We'll put the parking somewhere else. Right, okay. But, we well, still, but then we still won't we're have an still easement. Out of it. Settles my opinion. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. Well, thank you. <clears throat> Any other questions from the council? Okay. Anybody else before we have a motion? Good. So I guess I'd be willing to entertain motion a motion. Motion to accept the deal as structured between the DPW. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's a word in here thing. Um, do we need to respond to his request for? No, he's read a minority report. Okay. I mean, that's okay. Pros. Just wanted to understand that. Okay, I move to approve the easement agreements between the City of East Hampton and Pansioni Associates Real Regional Realty uh, LLC and to grant parking slash landscape easement to said Pansion Associates and to accept a 20-foot wide sanitary sewer easement 
from said Pansion Associates in exchange all for the purposes of obtaining a sewer line easement for an existing sewer line located on property owned by said Pansion Associates on Caldoff Street, East Hampton, Massachusetts. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? I just wanted to say that this seems like a win-win and I, don't, I do respect Councilor Krasinski's real estate knowledge. And his decision, though, is based on an appraisal, which we'd have to pay for, which I don't feel is necessary. There's another factor in that if we say no, regardless of the appraisal, the owners aren't going to accept this. And to me, not having access to a very vital sewer line is very important. And we are getting something. We are getting an easement for giving up some property. Mm -hmm. So I don't think we're losing value. So I urge the council to say yes to this. <clears throat> Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Any abstentions or nays? Seeing none, motion passes. And at this time, we are a little bit past our time for our public hearing, so I would entertain a motion to so open moved. the public hearing. Second. We have a motion and a second to open the public hearing. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Uh, looks like we have a supplemental appropriation to start us off. Uh, yes, we have a supplemental appropriation submitted by the CPA, which of which I am also the chair of. This is a rather um, no-brainer. This is an affordable housing appropriation. It was approved as an affordable proper submission on affordable housing. The uh, housing authority has a number of units which are supporting senior citizens and they have requested stovetop fire suppressors so that when the senior, and I can attest to the fact that I've done it, leaves the burning pot on the stove and they walk away, they won't burn up the apartment and themselves. Um, the CPA voted unanimously for this and we granted them a little extra money so they could buy extras because once this suppressor fires, it's a CO2 explosion, it has to be replaced so then the authority will have extras to go in. Um, this is very much supported by the fire department um, and very much supported by the CPA and I urge the counselors to say yes to this. I think uh, it will might save some lives. Okay, any questions from the counselors? Any questions from the public? Comments? Seeing none, I'll entertain a motion. I will read this as a second reading a supplemental appropriation request has been made for the following appropriation eight thousand dollars to be appropriated from the cpa reserved for affordable housing account eight thousand dollars to be appropriated to affordable housing for stove fire i'm sorry stove top fire suppressors for the housing authority eight thousand dollars for the following purpose, to fund the purchase and installation of stovetop fire suppressors in all dwelling units managed by the East Hampton Housing Authority. I move that we accept this appropriation. Second. second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Uh, any further discussion? Seems like a no-brainer. <laughs> agree. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any abstentions or no's? Motion passes. Uh, okay, next one is there. Okay, it looks like we have, um, the next one is a proposal to amend the city ordinances, chapter two administration, article two elected officials by replacing the existing sections 2.17 and 2.18 uh, with new salary scales. Council. The finance committee met and voted <laughs> three to zero to have what we consider a modest increase in salaries for the council and for the school committee. Um, just to update, everyone every time there is a new council elected the first term we are required by charter the finance committee to review elected official stipends boards and committees the finance committee in the previous term voted to give the mayor a raise and decided that this time the fine the city council should be considered and um, taking that up since uh, I think Councilor Krasinski, Councilor McCoy, and myself were on the committee the last time and we all remembered that discussion. In, in reviewing this, we reviewed the documents that were provided thankfully by the clerk showing many cities and towns, most of whom are well above our council salaries. Just looking at Northampton, they have $9,000 salary, $10,000 for the council president, and the school committee gets $5,000. Now some would argue that 
they have a larger budget, therefore they should be paid more. My personal comment on this is that I don't serve as a city councilor um, to get paid. I serve because I feel that I can make a difference and that I have a responsibility to my community because I can contribute. I have knowledge that I think I can contribute. But we all need to remember that we're paid also for our responsibility. Our responsibility to be a check and balance on the administration, on finance especially, is the same responsibility as Boston or Northampton or anybody else. They have more people, but the same responsibility. When we make a decision that affects the residents in the city of East Hampton, we make the same kind of decision that a Northampton councilor would make. That being said, the councilors at the time did not feel, given both of those sides of the equation, that a large, uh, which was suggested that we get a fairly large raise, was necessary, and I was not in favor of that. Um, so we did vote a modest raise of $1,000. It's been eight years since any increase happened. That $1,000 for us, and I think it was 500 for the school committee, adds $12,000 to the budget for fiscal year, for the fiscal year for the next term. This begins January 2018, and where that fiscal year would be half a year. Okay, so that's important to note. When we vote on this, we are not voting for our own raises. We have to run for re-election. So that's important for the residents to know. Um, so the finance committee did vote for this three to zero. I'll entertain any questions? Questions from counselors? Any questions from the public? Comments? Seeing none, I'll entertain a motion. I will read two motions. First is to approve a uh, change in the ordinance of Section 217 School Committee salary in accordance with the Home Rule Charter, Section 41E. The annual salary of six elected members of the school committee shall be 1400 per member, effective January 2nd, 2018. I move that we approve this change in. Section 217. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? I have, See, oh. I have a quick question. Um, how often does the school committee meet? Once a month? Once a week. So Once, twice a month, I think. Twice a week. Month. Very similar. I, oh. yeah, we have a motion on the table. It is about the same as us. Right. About the same. And That's how small. often does the. Dan can answer. And how often does the, the retirement board meet? meet? We're not entertaining their salary. I don't understand why. We just recently decided to pay the retirement board three thousand dollars a year. So I'm just trying to see the volume of work between those two committees. As I'll state, I don't, I don't know how to answer that question because I don't know the retirement board's meeting schedule. But as I recall, that was con that was a raise that was similar to, to others in the retirement systems and that we aren't, as I said, for our council, we are not being paid for the time we spend because a lot of, there's different variations on what council responsibilities are or school committee or retirement board. We're being paid for responsibility. So I think that our responsibility is why we should get a raise. It is not about how long it takes us to do our job. That's just my opinion. I can't answer the question on a retirement board. Sorry. Um. I, as I recall, when we when we did talk about the retirement board, I think one of the the things that stood out for me when we were talking about their raises was their fiduciary responsibility was right. so great with the fund that they had to manage for the retirement and the city employees was pretty dramatic, and they're doing an outstanding job. I mean, they're doing better than a lot of towns in terms of the value of it and taking care of it. So, I mean, it was a no-brainer, really, as far as I was concerned. Um, for them so you know it's it's millions of dollars and they're they're handling it pretty well day to day so I didn't have a problem with that one great thank okay. you any further discussion related to the school committee salary increase okay seeing none all those in favor aye aye any abstentions or against seeing none motion passes I will read it in the form of a motion. I move that the City Council approve section, a change in Section 218 of our ordinances under City Council salary in accordance with Home Rule Charter Section 2-4A. The annual salary of the City Council shall be $4,000 per member, effective January 2nd, 2018. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any abstentions or against? 
Okay, motion passes. Mr. President, I move the public hearings be closed. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to close the public hearings. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. It is closed. Um, so we're going to pick right back up with a uh, report from Rules and Government Relations. Mr. President, I'm going to make a motion to ex extend our defined scope of mission statements because I wasn't prepared to present that this evening. I'd like to extend that for 60 days. Well, I'm going to extend it till September 2016 because I don't know how many days that is. Okay. So whatever that is. I'd like to make a motion that council accept that. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to um, extend the deadline for mm -hmm. defining the scope and creating mission statements for the subcommittees until September uh, 2016. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 And since Councillor Krasinski is one of the people that asked for some uh, editing, I'd be better if he was here. And I promise to bring them forward next time. Sorry. Okay. Uh, and I will take the next. Um, piece of business as there is some action that is required. I uh, did, uh, Councilor McCoy asked me um, to report out that the ad hoc naming committee uh, for naming the boardwalk in honor of uh, Michael and Deborah Tautznick uh, has met and at their first meeting um, they have uh, requested that they be resolved um, as it was the former mayor's uh, intention to maybe find a different way to honor um, his late wife. Uh, and so I'm bringing that forward uh, to um, formally, in the form of a motion, ask to uh, disband the uh, ad hoc committee for naming the boardwalk in honor of Michael and Deborah Tautznick without prejudice. Second. Second. Okay. Mr. President. Yes, sir. Since this was requested by a properly submitted petition, I'm interested to know if the committee members felt that the petitioners would be okay with this. I believe that... Or that they would respect, of course, Mike's feeling. I believe that um, at least some of those petitioners were present, present. at the meeting, and they did vote unanimously, um, okay. four to zero, to uh, dissolve the official boardwalk naming committee. Well, I think we should respect um, former Mayor Tosnick's opinion, so I'm certainly in favor of it. Uh, and and um, okay, so we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, so we have no more naming committees. <laughs> no more naming committees. <laughs> <laughs> we, naming we have committees, tonight was the, the night, the night of taking down the naming committees, uh, and uh, we did our new business for mayoral appointments. Uh, and did we do? We did the, the new business for. Yeah, okay. All right. So well, I'll I move that we adjourn. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Beautiful. Do we have to sign yeah. our. Yeah. Do we have to sign everything? We voted for raising the power of hand. Oh. <laughs>